Welcome back guys this is Richard from Productive Academy and in this video we are going to see what is the best way to develop an app for android or for ios which is the best way to develop an app well if you are someone who's trying to learn app development or who has, wants to develop a new app for your project i hope this video helps you i'll be going through four popular frameworks in this video and i'll be telling you the pros and cons of each framework and by the end of this video i'll be even telling you my choice of framework for app development so without any further ado let's get started so let's get started with first party native apps first party native apps are the applications created by the os provider itself first let's get started with android studio Android Studio was created by Google. It is Google's official IDE for developing Android apps. Well, Google created Android, right? So they created Android Studio to develop Android apps. And Android Studio's interface is pretty easy and you can develop both front end and back end of your apps in an easier interface using Android Studio. I, my I myself have used Android Studio and I found it really easy. But using Android Studio, you can only develop Android apps. There are two programming languages for that purpose. One is Java, another one is Kotlin. Well, Java, Java could be the best option to develop Android applications because Android's official language is Java and Android consists most of its APIs developed using Java. And for a long time, Android applications were be developed using Java programming language only. And Java can provide a really high performance, fast loading of your Android apps. But the coding of Java could be quite lengthy and difficult and solving errors using Java could be a tedious task. It takes us to the next option which is Kotlin. Kotlin is a new programming language developed by the company called JetBrains and Kotlin's code can be much more simpler. If you see the picture, the Java code, that, that much of Java code can be compiled in four lines of Kotlin code. And the advantage of Kotlin is it can be used side by side with Java. You can use both Kotlin and Java code in your Android Studio. But by using Kotlin, there could be a slighter decrease in performance, not much of a decrease. There could be a little bit slighter decrease in performance. If you want to choose Android Studio and you already know Java, you can go with Java and code uh, create apps with Java. But if you don't know any programming language and you are jumping in android studio i would recommend you to go with kotlin because kotlin has a lot of uh, community support right now and it's been constantly developing but if you already know java it's better to go with java let's go to our next framework which is xcode well just like android studio was developed using google xcode was developed using apple they say it has a similar interface like uh, android studio and to run xcode you need to have an apple computer because xcode will not run in a windows computer so you need to have an apple computer to run xcode and the programming language they use in xcode is called swift swift is a programming language developed by apple and the swift language was designed to work with apple's coco and touch framework apple have a different touch frameworks than the other mobiles so this Swift programming language was designed to work with those things but Swift can be only used in iOS, it can't be used in Windows. Our Android Studio and Xcode was first party native apps developed by Google and Apple which were the native platforms for Android and iOS. Now we are going to see a third party native apps which are Flutter and React. Using these third party native apps you can develop both Android and iOS code in a single platform. So let's go ahead. First, what is Flutter? Flutter is an open source UI software development kit created by Google. It was created by Google, Android was created by Google, Android Studio was created by Google. Similarly, this Flutter was created by Google. But the difference is, using Flutter, you can develop Android apps, iOS apps, Linux applications, Mac and Windows applications. They are even saying you can develop web applications, but they are not stable. But the most important part is, you can develop both Android and iOS app in a single code base using Flutter. And the programming language Flutter is using is Dart programming language. Dart is a programming language specifically created for Flutter and Dart was developed using Google and Dart programming language can be directly converted into both Android and iOS code. You don't need to have any bridge in between. In some other frameworks you would have some bridge in between but in, in case of Dart it can be directly converted into Android code and it can be directly converted into iOS code. It was created for this purpose but the con of dart is well there are lesser community support because flutter was actually created in 2018 which which has been only two years and within two, two years it has been developed a lot since it's been only two years the community support is comparatively lesser but it's been uh, rapidly growing flutter is rapidly growing and uh, it's been freddy spreading fastly so the community support is rapidly growing so i believe flutter can get at the top in app development the next third party framework we are about to see is react 
React is an open source JavaScript library for building user interface components and it's been maintained by Facebook and just like Flutter, using React you can develop both Android and uh, iOS apps in a single code base. And React uses JavaScript for app development. Since JavaScript has been in a long time for this community, there is a lot of community support for both JavaScript and React. So whenever you are getting errors when you are coding in React, it's easier to find them and easier to clear them. But the code will be comparatively slower in uh, by using JavaScript. Because in the case of Dart or Java, we were using the native Android uh, code or the code was been directly converted into an uh, Android binary. But in case of JavaScript, the JavaScript code will go to a bridge and this bridge will convert that code into an iOS binary or Android binary. So it would, it would not be directly converted. It would need a bridge for that conversion. Since there, it is going into a bridge, the code is comparatively slower. It is not completely slow. But it's a little bit slow than other native languages. But the community support for JavaScript is a huge plus. So if you want to select a third party framework like Flutter or React, if you know JavaScript, you can go with React because you already know JavaScript and it would be easier to get started with React and React has a lot of community support. But if you don't know JavaScript yet, you are going to learn a new program language, then by all means go to Flutter because Flutter was developed by Google and Google obviously provides you a lot of support and a lot of new features. So Flutter would be the best option if you didn't, don't know JavaScript or other programming language and you are getting started as a new app developer. My choice of framework for app development would be Flutter. Well, I was thinking of creating a course on app development and I was researching on the best framework I could use to create the course on and I thought it would be Flutter. Because Flutter has been growing very fast in the past two years and it's amazing to code both Android and iOS app in a single code base and we are getting a high performance in that too. I found out in the internet there aren't many good Flutter courses explaining the uh, complete detail of Flutter. So I plan to create a complete course on Flutter right from the basics to the advanced. So if you are interested in that course, let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. It really takes in a lot of effort to make a single video. So if you did found this video useful, leave a like to this video. And if you are having any suggestions for upcoming videos, leave your suggestions in the comment section. And let me know if you are interested in the Flutter course that I'm about to create and uh, how you want it. Let me th uh, know those thoughts in the comment section. If you are having any queries and concerns, leave them at the mail productiveacademy at gmail.com and follow us on Instagram. We post a lot of educative content in our Instagram. I'm sure you will find it useful. And if you haven't yet, become a member of our Telegram channel soon. You will find the link in the description. And subscribe to our uh, channel because I will be posting new videos every week and the videos will be in both in Tamil and English. So please subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.